Hello my friends, how are you doing? It is a beautiful day and in this episode I'm going to show you five amazing black and white styles that you can do in Affinity Photo. My name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer and I want to thank all of my patrons who support me and make these videos possible. Now this episode is going to be chock full of secret sauce and really nice cool tricks so watch it from start to end to get all of that and another thing I want to point out before we get started with the Affinity Photo tutorial is that if you want to do a lot of editing and styles for black and white Using Nick Collection's Silver Versa Pro 2 makes the job so much easier because it has some very intriguing tools. I want to show you really quick what I mean by that and how this differentiates from the work process in Affinity Photo. So if we open this up, the plugin, first of all, what you can see here on the left side is presets. It comes with a lot of presets, but you can also create your custom presets. But the good thing about these presets is they give you a lot of inspiration. They give you a lot of different things to look into and they are categorized by, for example, modern, classic, vintage, for example, a nice vintage style that we are also going to create today is this one here. But another thing, that is really interesting and especially important for black and white editing is first of all here on the right side you have all these settings and you see here that you have tonality protection something you can't do in affinity photo but it is really important for black and white adjustments and i will show you a little trick on how to get a little bit around that maybe and um, another thing you can do here is to set control points that is very nice. You can affect only certain areas also based on their tonality. That is very nice. And another thing that is really cool is that you have these film types here. So you can click here and you can see that these are actually branded film types. Here we have Ilford, Kodak, Aqua. So they are simulating the classic looks of these black and white films that you can do with that. So there's a lot of stuff in there that is kind of hard to do in Affinity Photo if you can do it at all. That said, let's go back to Affinity Photo. And the first style that I want to show you here is a black and white plus brown look, which is very nice, very stylish and very easy to do. What you need to do for that is to create an HSL adjustment. And what you want to do is to select any of these points and you will realize that you have these points here. And then here's the secret sauce. First of all, you need to look at that line here. So the area that is black in here, this black line, this is the affected area. The area that is white is the not affected area. So you want to pull these to the other side. So all of the orange values and red values are not affected. So go like this and then also pull this over here. And now if we reduce the saturation, you can see that we only have our orange, our yellow and our um, red values left and you can move these points around until you are happy with the results. Okay, now here's another secret sauce part. What we see here is a little bit of a problem because we have a lens flare here from that nice light that the boy is holding in his hand and in this effect, it suddenly stands out and it doesn't look good. So how do we circumvent that? Now, what I'm going to do is to create a second HSL adjustment that sits below the first HSL adjustment we have just created. And I will just pull down the saturation so everything is black and white, right? Like that. And then I'm going to go in here to layer invert layer. Make sure you have this HSL adjustment selected layer invert layer. So now everything is visible again. And now I'm just going to take a paintbrush. Let's make this a bit smaller. So that's huge paintbrush. Okay. Um, let's make this a little bit sharper. Let's go with 62% opacity can move this up. Let's go with 80% here. And I want to set this to white actually. And then I can paint these areas out where I have this lens flare effect that doesn't work so nice with the effect I want to create here. You can see now I have removed that all these areas are black and white, but we still want to have a nice color shine. So what we want to do now is to create an ellipse over that area here like so. 
And then we want to put this on top of our HSL adjustments like so. I go to effects, Gaussian blur. I set this up, let's say 300 pixels. That looks good, okay. And I'm gonna move this over the light. And now I click here on fill and I select a color that is matching uh, the situation that I wanna have in my image. So what we want to do here is to pull this down to find a blend mode that looks good. Uh, you can try different ones here. Uh, let's go with overlay so it's a little bit more intense. And now you can see that we have a nice even shine around the light without this kind of ugly um, lens flare cut out that we had before. So this looks a lot better and also makes the light on the boy a little bit warmer. And you can see how powerful this look is because it singles out just this kind of situation and focuses on the boy, has the color in there while all of the rest is just black and white. And this is a really cool, powerful, and as you can see, very easy look. All right, now let's go to our second look and here comes the next secret sauce thing that I wanna to present to you. So when we would just create a black and white adjustment and I want to make some settings here, let's make them a little bit extreme and um, yeah, like this. So you can already see in the background a lot of color bending, a lot of pixelation, a lot of ugliness going on over here doesn't look good at all. This is not what we want to have. Now, I tested a lot of different methods, but what I found, what you can do is that you do frequency separation and then do your adjustment on the blurred part because the blurred part doesn't have all these many steps in between, but at the same time, the picture stays crisp and sharp because of the frequency separation. So let's do that. We go to filter, frequency separation. You can move this over here a little bit so you see um, the structure, the details in the picture. And you want to move this up the radius. Let's go with five pixels here. That looks pretty good. Click on apply. And now we have the high frequency, which is this part here. Oh, sorry, uh, which is this part. And we have our low frequency where you can see all of this is blurred. And because it's blurred, we don't have all these steps in here so we can do a harsher adjustment. Another thing that is important to point out here, more secret sauce. If you work with black and white pictures, what is important are the structures, so the patterns in the picture, but also the light and shadow situations because black and white is often a look that turns it into something that is more um, looking like a sculpture, like a pattern. Look for nice and interesting light and shadow situations when you take the picture. So now again, I create an adjustment for black and white. And this time I'm setting it between the high frequency and the low frequency layer. And now I can do a lot more adjustments without getting this ugly color bending. And what I want to do here is to create a rather dark look that is focusing on the boy. You can see we can adjust the light because here you set the brightness for the different color channels, for the different colors that we have in here. And because the light has a lot of red and orange values in here, I can turn the light down, I can turn the light up. So you can beautifully play with that. And this is what I meant before. Uh, treat it like um, basically a sculpture. You're carving out elements from the picture. You want to really focus on certain things. And this is what separates black and white photography from color photography that you can really really, really focus on these kind of areas and change the picture completely in the way it is to really create your own story in the picture. So that is really amazing about black and white photography. So we have created this now. Now the next thing, I want to add some more parts here. I want to create a little bit of a shine around uh, this, a softer look. So for this, I'm going to create a Gaussian blur on my picture and I'm gonna blur this. This is now on the wrong layer, so make sure that you pull this out. You can set it on top of everything. Blur it to your satisfaction and set the blend mode to screen like this. Now this is way too bright. We don't want this 
Uh, so what we are going to do is to go over here to blend ranges and we are going to work with the underlying composition ranges and pull this down so you can see this is only addressing some parts of the picture. I will move this up a little bit like so that looks good and now you can see that we have a little bit of a shine on everything everything has a little bit of a very nice soft glow on it I want to do two more things first of all one thing you see here is that a little bit of color is still left in here and that is based on the frequency separation because the high frequency also took a little bit of color with it so what I want to do here is to create another HSL adjustment that I'm going to set on top of everything and just pull it down to nothing so now I actually know that my picture is truly black and white and you can see if we pull this out it's really nice a really nice situation is focusing on the boy but it's a lot more intimate it's a lot more connected to that situation rather than before with all the colors all the kind of situations going on you can really focus on the structure on the beautiful light and shadow situation in here another thing I want to do here is to go in here and create a curve to just press our values a little bit more together so let's pull this down here a tiny bit and then pull this up here a little bit like so maybe let's move this back a little bit okay so as you can see you can shape this a lot this is really about you about your connection to the picture about what you want to create in here and uh, now we have an even tighter connection to the boy because all of the landscape suddenly is in the background it doesn't play as much as a role and we just have these kind of nice soft lights around here another thing we can do uh, with our Gaussian blur is that we can reduce that a little bit and then maybe bring it back a little bit from our underlying composition ranges so let's push this up a bit in here like so and by reducing the opacity you reduce the intensity of the effect also so we have this nice soft softer light softer shine on there as you can see but at the same time in these uh, mid ranges here it's not as intense all right so this is the second look we've created much darker but a lot more intimate and a lot more connected to the situation that's going on here okay now I want to create another look where I bring the landscape back a little bit so uh, what I want to do here and this is just a small difference in what you do but a huge difference in the artistic look and the expression of the picture so what I'm going to do here is simply that I go into my black and white adjustments and I play around with these settings here and as you know the grass is green so we're gonna push up the green and you can see how I bring back parts of the landscape down here and suddenly create a situation where it looks like oh maybe there was a little bit of moonlight going on in a situation you can play around with the other values too to see where you want to go with that and now that we have created this another thing I want to do here is that I put on everything uh, unsharpen mask so on top of everything again make sure that this is not a child of another adjustment layer because then you won't see the effect if this happens just click on that layer and pull it out on top like so I'm gonna set the radius to about uh, 1.5 so let's type this in here 1.5 there we go and then we can push up the factor a little bit let's actually set this to one that looks good and you can see that now this also gives the grass in the foreground a lot more presence so if I turn this off you can see that this is dreamy and blurry but if we turn this on this becomes more sharp also here on the stone there is more structure so this now has more presence it uh, becomes more apparent we become more aware of it and you can see how this changed the look of the picture it's just a little bit of adjustment but a huge change to how the picture looks how the picture feels all right here comes another amazing change what you can do and that is to introduce back a little bit of color but overall of the picture for example a sepia look or a blue steel look 
and you will see how much this influences the look. So what I'm going to do here is to create a rectangle. So on the left side here, rectangle tool, just click and drag it out over all of the picture. Secret sauce, what you want to do here is to set over here your color to HSL because HSL gives you the hue, the saturation and the luminosity. And that is pretty important to us. The luminosity is how bright or dark the color is. This is really important for this effect. So what we want to do is to set the blend mode of this layer to vivid light in this case, like so. And then you want to pull this down to just have a little tiny hint of it in here, like so. Let's zoom in here. And now you will see when I adjust the settings here, you can see if I turn this down from the luminosity, how much this changes. If I change my saturation, how much that influences, you can have a, a very light touch of that color in there or you can make it a lot more intense. I would go with a lighter touch, just a hint of it. And also the luminosity influences also how the picture looks. You can see this makes the picture brighter. If you go too bright, it destroys the picture, not a good idea. And if you go darker, uh, you can see that this has a different influence on the picture. And you can also select the color, of course. Now I would suggest two different colors. Uh, you can try and play around with other colors, but mainly I would suggest to go with these yellow orange tones for a sepia look or to go with the blue uh, tones over here to go for more this kind of a steel look. You can play around with darker and brighter uh, blue values. And again, reduce the saturation. You will see that this will also have an effect on how much of that blue is in here. So just a tiny smidge is good enough. Don't overdo it. Don't pull too much color into that because it will just look strange. Now here is our last look. And that is also very easy. We'll go to Pixabay, enter paper texture, and there you can find different paper textures. I'm going to turn this off for the moment. And then I'm going to right click and say merge visible because this enables me to have just a JPEG layer with everything we have created before that is now rendered into one layer. The other adjustments are still down here. So you can just delete that layer you just created and go back and readjust them. That's not a problem. But having this all rendered into one layer makes the next step so much easier. Again, a little bit of secret sauce on how to have an easier, nicer uh, workflow. Okay, so what we want to do here is basically what you can do is to create either, there's two ways you can do this, either create an ellipse over your picture like so. The color of the ellipse doesn't matter at all. And you want to now go to Gaussian Blur to blur this a little bit as much as you want. If you want to have it more than this goes to 100 pixel, you can enter it by hand. Let's go with 300 here. Boom, like this. And then what you want to do is with our pixel layer here that we have just created from Merge Visible, you want to click on your ellipse, right click on that, and say mask to below. And what this does now is that this will create a mask that has the shape of our ellipse, including the blur. And the cool thing now is I can still go in here and readjust the ellipse, as you can see. So we can have a really cool effect from that. And you can even reduce the opacity. And what I would suggest here, you can leave it like that, but I think it looks a little bit unnatural. So what I would do here is to click on the pixel layer and set the blend mode to multiply because this makes it look more like it's actually on the paper. And then select the ellipse again and select the opacity because then you can make it a little bit more transparent so a little bit more of the paper looks through. Now one thing you might realize here is that this is a grungy paper and there is a lot of paper structure coming through that is a little bit conflicting with the look of our picture. We don't want to have all these details in here as a super easy fix for that. 
what you simply want to do is to create a pixel layer in between your paper layer and your picture layer so just click here on add pixel layer like so then you go over here you sample the paper color like so you click on this point drag it over so you sample this and then click on this again to make it the active color then you go to your paintbrush let's make this a little bit bigger and now well, these settings are okay you can go to 100 percent here if you want to and then just paint this in here maybe not go to 100 percent let's go to let's say 50 percent so it's a little bit softer from the color make the brush a little bit bigger and then i click here once or twice and you can see how this now has a color in between our paper and the picture so this reduces the impact of the grunchiness and you can see the picture a lot better so this is a very easy effect and uh, by the way i told you there are two methods to create this look now the second one let's turn off the ellipse here we are back to our original picture the second one is to create an empty pixel layer so again click on add pixel layer put that on top of the image layer so here is the image layer here is your pixel layer again right click on it and say mask to below like this mask to below and now what you can do because this is a mask you can just take your paintbrush and you can just paint this in here so let's go hardness zero and i will reduce the opacity even more uh maybe let's go with 25 percent like so and now when you paint this in here you can actually do uh like a shape that is custom basically and the more you paint on it the more you will see of the picture because this strengthens the effect the opacity of your filter so like this you can create a real custom shape of wherever you want to have a visibility or a invisibility of the picture so you want to see more or less of the paper right so this is a second way to do that this was the tutorial for today i hope you enjoyed it let me know in the comments what you think and maybe join my facebook group where there is over 1900 amazing other photo artists that you can meet talk with them and learn from each other thank you very much and see you soon bye